tools in understanding how interface work in Java. And at the same time, it is also difficult for you to install other OSs like maybe Ubuntu, uh, FreeBSD, or even OpenBSD, or not to mention that Windows 98 into a phone like this. It takes really a much of hack to install different kinds of OSs into the phone. Okay. Now, this is the comments when I told somebody that, okay, can I, uh, I'd like to try to install Pythons into my phone. The comments I got is, are you serious? And somebody will say, oh, okay, this is funny, but you know, you can try. And even, of course, uh, try to put uh, what Hong Kongese will say, they have my teeth in. That's why I got for it. But I like to try. I just like to try and see how things get to go to that. <clears throat> okay, so back to who am I? I'm the co-chair of Python, uh, PyCon Malaysia 2018. I'm also the vice president for MyPod. Uh, just to let you know that MyPod is a new uh, society that forms by my friends who has uh, who who wants to uh, connect the network engineers together as an event. And the same at the same time, I'm also a cloud automation. Uh, engineers for one of the uh, insurance company which is not to be named and the reason for that is uh, if I want to have my company names I have to go to a series of compliance interviews so I prefer not to name that. Okay. So. Okay. Now what we know about Python is that Python actually can do a lot of things. It can be installed on Win10 or any kind of Win platform, Linux, Mac OS, and even right now, we know that Python can be installed, be it to be ESP8266, uh, Raspberry Pi. You can do all sorts of things, be it to be name it, you like it, like data science, you can do deep learning, machine learning, you can do all sorts of six admin tasks, you can even program it as you like, you can do anything with it. So for example, something that I do daily as work, I do as uh, I use Python to uh, run automations on the network devices, trying to install a thing, try to check the health of the network devices, and everything. And as a pastime, I also use Python to write the uh, on Raspberry Pi, where I can control the GPIO, which I find it very fascinating. Where you don't need to go down to a very difficult level of con uh, writing a C code just to control the GPIO. Python does a very good stuff on that. But the question is again, how are we going to put Python into an Android phone? Okay. Now, if you go to the Google App Stores or Google Play Store, you find that it is not very difficult for us to find Python on Android. And perhaps you might be wondering, like, why I'm here to hear about this, since I know that there's an IDE that allows me to run Python interpreter, and some of the Python interpreter can even allows you to run NumPy, Keras, or TensorFlow. Array. So, why, why we are here today? Okay. So the reason for that is very simple. That which I actually found an app that is very interesting that it can do one thing, okay? For the typical Android phone that you can see from here, as I mentioned before, it is a tracker. And what does tracker, what would tracker do? It tracks every of your moment and by how it tracks your motion, by through a lot of sensors. And not to mention that there's a lot of different kinds of sensors inside this phone right now, and probably right now he's tracking me to some sort of things, okay? So what we have over there is you have a sensors of what you call accelerometers, gyroscope, <coughs> sorry, and even uh, magnetometers, light sensors, you name it, you have everything to it. But the question over here is that do we have a do we have access to these sensors? And if we have access to these sensors, how are we going to utilize the data that we can extract from these sensors. So this is a question over there. So back then, in 2016, we actually found uh, issues, or I actually like to engage in one of the projects that I have, and that was happens in, during the Christmas time. That was uh, 2016. So I decided to catalog my books, uh, just to, for you to know that uh, I have a collection about uh, about 500 to 700 books. And sometimes, you know, uh, doing a cataloging uh, of the books is really a very painful experience because you need to key in the titles, you key in uh, authors and everything. 
So I decided to think of a way to utilize the ISBN numbers to catalog my books. Okay, so I found out the way I scrapped the data from the web, and then I found that I tied that with the ISBN. I managed to write a Python libraries that helps me to find the book's metadata by just keying the ISBN. By the way, how many of you know what is ISBN numbers? Uh, if you flip through the back of your books, there's a series of numbers that start with 9, 7, 8, something, something. That's your ISBN numbers. And when you go to the bookstore, they'll scan through the bar, the code, and they will, uh, they'll know what books you buy from that. Okay? So after I finished writing the ISBN modules for that, I find that there's a difficult uh, there's an issue with that. I, again, I need to key in the numbers one by one, which is really pain in the ass when it comes to 500 books. So I told myself I need a scanner, and where can I get a scanner? Uh, definitely, I'm not going to buy one. So what I found out that is the phone has a scanner. You know that you barcode scanner, you scan the thing, it tells you everything. So how can I use this to scan the barcodes and then enter the met, uh, books metadata through? The, to the ISBN numbers. So always you know that Google is your best friend. Okay? You know that endings, you can search from Google, any bugs or any questions that you have, you can search through Google. And this is why I give from the Google search a very simple works. I just say, oh, okay, if Python can be run on Android phones through ID, is there any way that I can just build a very uh, clumsy webs or clumsy apps that helps me to scan the barcode? So I type in keywords, Python, Scan barcodes and join. And it turned out to be somebody has the same problem as I do. And this guy wrote a code. So this is a code. Okay. Okay. So if you look at the titles, then I'll we'll say, oh, okay, this if this is the case, then how does he run the thing? So digging deeper, I found out that there's two interesting apps that released by Google at that time that allows users or allows developers to write a simple script that has access to the, uh, some APIs on Android. First version was what they call as Android Scripting Engine, and I use it, didn't really like it, it's quite clumsy, yes, because it's the first version. And then they have a latest version which is called the Scripting Language for Android. And this Scripting, uh, scripting Language for Android actually has, uh, it can support a lot of different kind of language, be it to be if you talk about Running PHP on it, yes, you can do that. JavaScript, yes, uh, even Lua or Perl, you name it. There's a lot of different kinds of languages that you can run on it. So Python is one of it, and that's why I choose to work on that. Okay. <coughs> okay. So this is the code that we have from the page that you seen just now. So first thing, of course, as a developer, you try, you want to try out some snippet, copy and paste is one of it and boom, it runs. And the structures of the code is very simple. You just need to call and uh, libraries, import.android, and then the rest will, will become from that. So I did this, and then it runs. It runs as this is, and then it can be, the code of it is, you run this code, it will pop out a scan barcode, and for the scan barcode over there, it reads the ISBN number, and this ISBN number turns out to be a web view that shows you the metadata from the Google Books. Uh, by the way, Google Books is not functioning at the moment. There's some issue with it. Okay, so after this, we decided to uh, work with one of my students. Okay, his name is Vincent Liu. And we started to work on this concept called, this uh, project called Snapbook. And if you ask me why called Snapbook, because first thing, when you do a, a scanning of barcode, it snap. It came out with a name of Snap. Okay, we call it Snapbook. And another reason of it is during that time, Snapchat just came out, and then we you know anything that goes with Snap would be cool. So we decided to name it as Snapchat Snapbook. Okay. So if you want to know about more story about this uh, Snapbook, you can t uh, you can approach me. And actually, it is uh, running uh, running code right now, but I didn't uh, publish that because. The engine that I wrote for the ISBN actually scrapped data from various sources, including Amazon, so I decided not to publish that. But if you'd like to know about the concept of how, uh, how the scan barcodes can be used, and at the same time, you're also a book lover, you can approach me from that. Okay? But this is not satisfied, uh, satisfied for me, because one of it is we just know one of it, but we like to look at how detailed steps we can go 
into certain APIs that happens on the scripting language for Android. Okay, and this is one one of the snippets that I actually like uh, for myself because uh, I like the gravitational acceleration very much. Okay, so I decided to see how much data that can stretch from this phone over here to understand the behavior of the gravitational uh, acceleration of the globe. And just a quick question over there. How many of you know that actually your gravitational acceleration constant is not really a constant? Okay, and what's the reason behind? Anyone? No. Okay, the reason for it is not really a constant is because for every point in, okay, your Earth is not symmetric. Okay, so what you learn in high school most of the time, you treat the Earth to be symmetric. So for every point on the Earth, the gra gravitational acceleration is not the same because due to how the Earth, how the mass in Earth being distributed. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why I choose to have this to start with my project on the gravitational acceleration because gravitational acceleration tends to be obvious to all of us. Okay, so, okay. now that's our question over here. How does Python access the Android API. Okay, how? Okay. So again, how accurate with the data? No ideas. Okay. So we decide what I'll do next is decide I decide to look at two files over there which I can understand from that, which is written in which is written in Python. The first thing is the Android helper.py if you notice that from the snippet over here. Okay, not this one. It's okay, maybe later. Android helpers and ah okay, okay. Android helper dot py is one of the file and then Android dot the py is another one. Okay, let's begin with Android helper dot py. So for Android dot uh, Android helper dot py, the first thing that it has is on code is import dot Android and it started to inherit the class from Android dot Android. So if you look at that, writing a barcode is very is very simple. Okay, define scan barcode. And the interesting part of it is it actually has a return of self underscore RPC. Okay. So that gives me an idea of that. Oh okay, that communicates to RPC. But question is RPC by how? So I begin to look at another code which is from android.py and boom this is the method for the underscore RPC so for RPC the data again is very is very simple it actually actually calls for a socket and it does uh, it does a uh, socket socket communication so the first thing you turn everything into a JSON and send and send this JSON data including which is the method that it wants to call and at the same time with the argument that it wants to call. So he sent through this uh, method through the RPC and to the Android phone. So again, the code structure is very simple. But the question is, how does Java react or how does the Android apps react to such data? So again, I'm not satisfied. I begin to look at another file again, which is the source code of this app. Okay. But of course, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not really a Java guy, so I tend to understand a little bit from that. And this is the file that you can find from uh, GitHub. And this is a snippet from it. So what it does is, it picks up the signal, or it picks up the JSON file, uh, JSON data from, uh, uh, from the Python script via the RPC. And then once you receive it, he will return an intent, an uh, Android intent that starts with the scan barcode. So pretty much the code itself is very simple. So anything that runs away, any functions or any methods that you call from Android helper, it actually uh, triggers an intent in your uh, Android app. So for example, if you want to do a gravitational acceleration, uh, the method will return a JSON data with the parameters as well as the method and it will communicate and it talks to the Android app and tells it that, oh, please start the intent that helps me to read the data from gravitational acceleration. So 
pretty much, again, the code itself is very simple. And this is why we know that how they communicate and how you can read the data from the Android phone. Okay, so what are the APIs that we can read from an Android phone? You name it, acceleration is one of it, gyroscope is one of it, even Wi-Fi. At the same time, you can read the Bluetooth data, same as the SMS, and even you can make a phone call. Okay, but right now I have some issues with phone calls because actually initially I'm thinking of recording of my own voice and send through uh, and make a phone calls and send that data over the phone call, and I haven't really found the way to do it. So that is one part of it. And by reading through the code, I find that the, the only way that you can do with phone is that you can send the numbers and make a call, but you still need to be there to speak to somebody when you dial the number. So that is the only one thing that I haven't got it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, so that's the conclusion for it. Okay, so we know that the mechanism is very simple. So what it does is that it's always communicating with JSON data via the uh, APC. And of course, I mentioned before, the data and the methods are communicate to Java data, and that is how the communication is done between Python script on the SL4A, uh, SL4A and scripting language for Android. And that's how they communicate with each other. So pretty much is the way that they have the communication is really simple. So it doesn't deter me or doesn't stop me to write a code from that. So this is what I have from here. And then I'd like to do a demo on this. Oh yeah, by the way, this, this is the app. If you'd like to download it, you can uh, scan the barcode and then straight away you have it. And by the way, just to mention that uh, QPython 3 is actually a fork from the uh, SL4A script launcher. So if you like to write the Python code, you can write it. And uh, I just tested with the app. I, I like it very much, even though it's still on the uh, beta stage for 3.6, but it supports AsyncIO. How many of you code AsyncIO here? No one? AsyncIO? Okay, uh, to be honest, uh, AsyncIO is a little bit difficult but I managed to call the thing out. Okay. So I'll skip this one. Okay, I'll skip this one. Yeah. Too much. Okay. Now I like to do a little demo over here. Okay. And this demo is a little bit interesting where it reads the gyroscope from that. And by the way if you scan the barcode it goes to my GitHub page and then uh, you can look for one uh, repo which is called Python PyCon Hong Kong and all the snippets are there. So I'd like to begin with the demo a look, a look from here. Pardon me for that. All right. So I begin to start my demo over here, which is okay. First thing. Yeah, 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 I, I did turn off from that. Ah, okay, uh, is it really dark here? Oof.
Oh, great. Uh, is it too dark from that? Ten minutes left. Okay, good. Just good. Okay. Now. So if you look at this thing, uh, this is a uh, very simple 3D models that made by Babylon JS and then it has the web sockets running at the back. So right now, if I move my phones right now, you start to be green. So see, that's one thing, that it reads the real time gyroscope from the phone. So if, you, if I turn around at like this, the flicks, okay, it flicks. Uh, of course, not quite accurate over here because I dropped my phone for a few times. <laughs> so it's okay. So it, 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 it rotates around, and even if I put it on the floor and then it spin, and you spin accordingly. Okay, you spin. So it reads the real time data from the phone over here. So you can do a lot of uh, things from here. Let's say if it rotates from there, everywhere, yeah, you can do so. Okay. So that's one uh, particular cool things about this phone from that and with the web socket and the JS you actually can do a lot of fun things with it. So it takes around. And the second demos that I have for here is uh, sending an SMS. Okay, nothing to hide. So this is actually the SMS that read from my phone right now. It's a real-time data. Okay, you can read it anyway. So not, there's nothing to hide. The, the I, I don't think I have uh, my message to my wife over here. Yeah, so it's okay. And at the same time, you can also read. You can also construct a page that allows you to send the SMS. So if there's anyone that would like to uh, to uh, Volunteer, I can actually use this to to send an SMS, and then you see whether you can get it or not. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, portal that I write for my SMS over there. So I'll, I'm going to. Uh, there's a little bit of problem with the screen over here. So I like to try sending myself for being not cheating over here. OK. 
Okay. So decided to have another phone over here and decided to make it loud so that uh, it doesn't sound like I'm cheating for now. Okay. So it will trigger us and you'll send an SMS over here. Okay, I got my previous one, but maybe I'll try again. Ah, I sent to somebody else. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha, finally. I sent to somebody else. Okay. So. Uh, if you like these uh, things, you can approach me later. And I think that's all for my talk for today. And sorry for a little bit of glitch over here. Yep. And okay, before we end, say any questions that you'd like to ask from the ground? Any questions from the ground? No questions? Anything? Okay, maybe that's uh, ends for my talk. Okay.